does this contain your next technologically advanced aviation aircraft panel? I don't know, but in this video, we're going to take a journey and see if it does. So this is my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printer that uh, I've had now for a couple of months and I've been using it to help me build my new aircraft panel. And so we'll walk through kind of what I've been using it for, how it's helped me refine the panel and uh, how I've used it to solve some things like making sure that brackets that I'm building are correct that they fit properly, I've got the right screw holes and fasteners in the right place, and doing it all without having to touch anything with aluminum. It's been a while, but I figured I'd do a quick update here. I haven't, uh, haven't been sitting around, just working on some other things, playing with a 3D printer, and I just wanted to show how I've been trying to leverage the 3D printer to help me figure out some of the things I wanna do. So on here, You'll see that uh, originally I had planned to put my audio panel up above my uh, display, but I've since changed that. And to test it out, what I did is I 3D printed this face plate out. In here, this is where the audio panel would go. It slides right into this spot. You can see I've got the, uh, the bracket in here for it, the mount. But you can keep, kind of see how things are going to look. So in here is going to be my Navcom. This would be my audio panel. And then there's a bunch of fuses, or sorry, switches that go in here. What this allowed me to do was to see how the spacing would work. You know, obviously I'm not going to leave it like this, but at least before I go get aluminum cut and done up for it, I get to kind of check it out and make sure it's going to fit. Also, this ensures that the designs that I do on Fusion 360 um, it makes sure that uh, all the dimensions are correct. So when I get it done, it's perfect. The holes, the cutouts, everything works really well. The other thing that I've been able to do with this is in here, if you can see this, you'll see this is a template for the bracket that I made that will hold both the Navcom and the audio panel in place. And because this is going in the center console, uh, I needed to make sure it was going to be nice and rigid. So what I did, again, I modeled this on Fusion 360. Based on that, I printed it off in my uh, 3D printer. And you can see I had to take into account some angles here to tip it in and then tip it back out so that it aligns up nicely with, uh, with the tunnel cover when it goes in. And even here, you can see I've got Clicos in place just to kind of hold it so you can get an idea, and I can get an idea really, of how it's going to work but so far it's looking uh it's looking pretty good uh you know again some of it works well some of it doesn't but this this does really work out and i've been able to do that with the uh, with the 3d printer but i'm pretty sure this is where i'm gonna end up with it uh i have to do the final check on this down here but this is looking very good the other thing that allow me to do is obviously the connector that's coming out the back of my audio panel and out of my Navcom. The Navcom less of a, an issue because if you look in here, now remember this is the bottom where the tunnel cover will be, but you can see that this is coming off pretty close. And so this will give me a good idea if I'm gonna have issues with the connectors. Doesn't look like I will. And certainly with the, uh, the Navcom, it should be just fine because it'll come right out the back. So that's the uh, other thing that it does for me. And then, of course, I get to see anywhere there's going to be interference, anything from wiring and so on. And in addition, now that I have this and I've got these brackets mocked up in, the, in Fusion 360, I can now run the wires up to, for instance, my switches. This is where all of the light switches are gonna be. Uh, I can run the wires up and know what route they're gonna take. I can also go and put 
spots onto the brackets for where the wires will be uh, connected through Clecos, uh, through you know harness connectors, um, grommets, or whatever I need to run in there, right? But uh, it uh, it works, I think, pretty well. And then further on that, you can see down here. I 3D printed out. This is my fuse panel. Even put the labels on here just to kind of get a good idea. Uh, there's not many break it, breakers in here, so not fuses, but breakers. Most of it is actually done through my VPX, but there's a few that I needed, especially for the essential bus. So if I lose power, I've got backup power through the, uh, the backup that I have back here. But also it's allowed me to do that. I have the opening for where I'm gonna put in my um, ELT display. And I 3D printed kind of a little glove box that would fit in here. The top of it's missing because I cut it off to just make sure it would fit. But uh, that's also worked out very well. So this is pretty close to where I want it to be. I'll finish wiring it all up and go from there. And then over here, because my 3D printer can't print the whole size of this, what I did do is I printed pieces of it, Clicoed it on here to get an idea of how it's gonna fit. And now that I'm pretty comfortable that it's gonna fit in there, and remember when I print these, this is printing it out pretty accurately to what I've got in Fusion 360. Now that I verified that, I can go get another cut of this done and uh, I'll get it again, temporary, you know, it's just a, a quick aluminum cut of it. But then I can put it in here, do my final fitting on it, and uh, you know, I didn't have to send it out, adjust it. As a great example, here's a, here's a really good one. When I first did this, this was closer to this edge, which when I put my display in here, I could see that they were gonna hit. Also, I had moved my displays down on both sides. In doing that, it was okay on this side because of the screw holes where they're at. But over here, it would have actually created an interference. So I had to move this one back up. Um, little things like that, that really, really difficult to fix once you've got a piece of aluminum. It's hard to, you know, once you've got holes cut in it, it makes it difficult. And then also little things like this here, you can see this is the retainer bracket for the uh, display. Again, put all the holes in Fusion 360. I can mock it up and I can verify that it's all gonna work. So all in all, very happy with it. Uh, been using it for other things too, but, but really this is, this is one of the main areas that uh, I was interested in. So hopefully you find this useful. Uh, I'll do a little more update later. As you can see in here, I've got a lot more of the wiring done, uh, more bundling of it if you'd like. By figuring this out, I was able to figure out how I'm going to run my jacks back to the armrest, which is where I'm going to have all the jacks for both the pilots and pa uh, pilot, co-pilot and passengers. And uh, yeah, just kind of tidying it all up, figuring out all the bundles, figuring out where I've got wires that may be a little too long that I need to cut back a bit. But there you have it and really trying to get this finished so that I can get this mounted in the plane so I can run the wires and then I can put the cabin top on. Hopefully it's useful and uh, I'll uh, provide some updates. Oh, one of the things I will be providing an update on here is just kind of a sneak preview is this is the the mod, well, I guess the service bulletin I figured I was going to do for my elevators. So I've got my brackets put in place here, the stands just to hold it. Now I got to drill out all of these rivets. Once I drill those out, I'll open it up a bit and get in here and with the tank seal, go in and seal the, uh, put tank seal along where the rivets are so that I don't have to worry about cracking in the future. And, uh, Hopefully soon we'll get another update from Vance and where they're at and where things are looking and what things are looking like and hopefully get a little more detail on if I have any issues with 
any of my elevators, uh, not my elevators, my ailerons or my flaps because I can't inspect those. There you have it. Have a great day. And uh, again, hopefully this is useful. Take care. And here's what it looks like when it's in. You can see I've got a little bit of spacing between the two. It looks like it fits good. The screws look like they'll be uh, not a problem when I go put the panel back on. And up on the top, it looks pretty good. And then the other one, you can actually see it now where this one's a little offset. Um, but uh, I think overall it looks good. And then of course my G5 would go over here. And uh, those would be my mags. The switch there is for my uh, standby battery. But uh, I think I like this a lot better. And then here in the middle, this is for uh, a reversionary mode. And then I think the last thing I need to figure out here is where I'm gonna put my dimmers for the the cockpit lights. I don't think I'm going to put them on here. I may actually put them up here in this spot. Uh, not sure. Flap goes up here in this spot. This of course is the throttle and uh, mixture and RPM. And then the rest you can see here. But I like this a lot better and because I'm using this, um, the, uh, the autopilot here the back of the autopilot is much shorter and therefore the connector is pretty easy and it doesn't require any cutting in the back which makes it a lot easier but uh, i like it it's i think it's getting there and then of course the panel itself i'll probably powder coat i'm thinking and right now it's bent here. I'm not sure if you can pick that up, but there is, is a little bend in it. And that's because this uh, carbon fiber back piece has an actual bend in it. So it's a slight four and a half, 4.9 degree bend or something. So when I'm finished, I'll actually put the bend. But the bend is just beyond this line here, which means it shouldn't interfere with any of my switches or anything else. And that's why I kept the panel to the side. Uh, sorry, the display to the side. Just keeps it nice and clean. And now, really, I just need to finish with the back pieces in here. And again, because I moved it, it's a small move. The wiring is still good. I don't have to rewire anything. The cable was long enough. And hopefully now, sooner or later, you'll actually see this turned on the other way around where it's actually sitting the correct way around but uh, for the moment I think this is uh, this is where I'll leave it cheers just sharing some uh, images from my 3d printer as I was kind of evolving moving from you know one stage of the design and build this is the brackets themselves as you can kind of see I've had to do it several times but it gives you an idea of what was involved in it and all the supports and so on. But uh, I think it came out pretty good. And here it is, you know, at the end with the final version of it. And this here is the glove box. I also figured I'd share this. This is the company I use uh, to do the aluminum cutouts for me. It's Send Cut Send. I've been uh, pretty happy with them. They send this package. It's boxed up really nicely. It's wrapped. You can see the shrink wrap in here. I've been opening it, but I mean, it's, it's in here good. They seem to do a pretty nice job. And I don't know, at least to me, it seems uh, pretty reasonable. Anyway, there it is. Send, cut, send.